Okay. We are given uh, an initial element and then a recursion formula in this example. And it says, assume that this sequence converges and find its limit. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of assumptions here. The first assumption that we're going to make is that A sub N, some sequence here, converges because they tell us it converges. All right. The next thing that we're going to say, well, if it converges, then it must settle on some limit. So we're going to say the limit as N goes to infinity for this particular sequence is going to be some number L. Our job here is to find out what L equals. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, the limit as N goes to infinity then of the next element, the A sub N plus one element must also be the same thing. It should also be L. So this is kind of the assumption that we're making here. So we're going to say, okay, well, I know then that the limit then of as n goes to infinity of 72 plus or 72 divided by 1 plus a sub n should equal l because if you reach the nth element and it has a limit then the next element should also approach the same value so our takeaway here is that we're going to say well l just equals 72 oops excuse me 72 plus, I'm sorry, 72 divided by 1 plus L. Because in this case, A sub N should be approaching L, okay? That's what we said earlier, way back over here. So what we're doing is we're going to make that substitution there. And we're, we're actually making it right in here, if you will. All right? So that's what's going on there. All right, so that's how we get this one plus L. So all we have to do now is a very simple algebra problem, and that is to solve for L. And what we're going to do is basically like some cross multiplication. We're going to multiply that up over here. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. That's going to be L times one plus L equals 72. So then let's fast forward a little bit and do some distribution. I get L squared, I'm sorry, L plus L squared equal 72. I get this equal to zero and I notice that it's quadratic in nature, right? So what do I get? L square plus L minus 72 equals zero. All right. So now what do we know? Well, we know that we can factor this. We can say, well, the factors of negative 72 with a difference of positive one are nine and eight. L plus nine, L minus 8, set that equal to 0 there, and I have two values for L. All right, I have initially L equals negative 9 by the zero factor property, and L equals 8. Well, I know that I'm only going to get positive numbers uh, from here, from, from the initial value, because if you think about the first value, it's 5. The subsequent value would be 72 over 1 plus 5. Again, a positive value. So there's no way that it could be a negative value because they're going to get, you know, positive. All right. They're all going to be subsequently positive because we're not dealing with negative numbers in this case. All right. So I'm just going to say here my justification, if you will, is that a sub n my sequence is positive, meaning greater than zero, all right, for all n that are greater than or equal to one, because we're only concerned with any element beyond the first element, right? So what can we say then? Well, we say then our limit equals eight, and this is our answer for this initial problem here. All right, we have a limit of this particular sequence, it's eight. All right, so a really nice example here. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example here. We're gonna call this next one number nine. All right, and let's see what this one's going to look like. This one says A1 is going to be negative two. And so to find the rest of the values, we're gonna use the following recursion formula, and that is to say that A sub n plus one equals the square root of eight plus two a sub n. 
All right, and again, we make a couple of assumptions here. Number one, A sub N converges. Okay, and then number two, the limit as N goes to infinity of A sub N is some limit L. All right, we keep that in mind right there. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if that limit is true, then the next possible value in this sequence should also approach L. So we take that principle and we set it up like that. Of course, A sub N plus 1 is just this square root business. So we write it as the limit as N approaches infinity of the square root of 8 plus 2A sub N and it should equal L, right? So what we're doing again is we're going to substitute that value in there and then we're going to solve for L. So we can say here then that L is going to be equal to the square root of 8 plus 2L. All right, and now we solve again for L. What we do is we will square both sides to get rid of this root, all right? And we're going to say L squared equals 8 plus 2L. We set that equal to 0. L squared minus 2L minus 8 equals 0. Something that yet again we can factor and apply the zero factor property to. So what are the factors of negative 8 with a difference of negative 2? Well, you might have guessed it. It's 4 and 2. And it's negative 4 and positive 2 at that. Okay. Looks like this. Okay, so let's see here. Um, we know that L is going to equal uh, positive 4, and L is going to equal negative 2. And again, we are taking the square root of something. I know that the initial value was negative. All right, the initial value is for sure negative. But each subsequent value after that would have to be positive because we're dealing with real numbers here, not imaginary ones at that so the limit could not be a negative number. All right, we're going to eliminate that possi possibility there. All right, we're going to again say that, uh, and let me write it in blue here just to distinguish it. We're going to say that the sequence values are positive for all values of n greater than or equal to 2. All right, and you can verify that. You plug in 2 into your recursion formula, you get uh, square root of 8 plus 2 times 2, 8 plus 4, square root of 12, and then so forth and so on, you're going to see that they're just positive, all right? The number gets larger under the root, all right? So in this case, we make the conclusion that the limit here must equal 4, all right? The limit must equal 4, all right? So two really nice examples here of finding a particular limit when given an initial element in a recursion formula again under the assumption that the sequence does in fact converge okay so given those assumptions we're able to make the case that hey this is the limit all right as always I hope this video was helpful and remember like and subscribe